Hi everyone. Good morning. This is second video in GCL. And very well complete the job part under its parameters within two minutes also if it is a refreshing video. But this is not a refreshing video. I am preparing this video keeping an entry level training programmer in mind. So, um, probably if you are an experienced person, you can skip this video if you are able to answer uh, some five questions I asked at the start of this video. If you don't know the answer or if you are not confident of your answers, probably you may want to come along with me in the content of the video. You don't have time to walk with me for 30 minutes, but still you want to just know answers for these questions, you directly get into the last minute of this video. Okay. So here are the questions. Okay. What will happen if I submit this job, whether it will get executed or there is any errors? If it is getting executed, how many steps in this job will get executed? Second, is this okay? This job will go fine if I code like this. Third. What will happen if I submit this member? Fourth, what will happen if I submit this member? Fifth, what will happen to the output if I code message level as 00? zero? Sixth, what will happen if I code type run equal to JCL code? Seventh, how do I release a job which is in a code status? Eight. What will happen if I submit this job? Okay. These are the questions. Okay. If you are confident of answering your answer for all the questions, uh, you can pat on, pat on your pack and um, exit this video. You will see in the next video. Okay. Well, probably uh, once you learn, let's first highlight JCL so that it is better readable. Okay. So jo <coughs> job, these are the parameters associated with the job. Parameters are generally classified on the high level into two categories. One is um, positional parameters, another is the keyword parameters. Positional parameters get their meaning by its position, whereas keyword parameters are coded in a syntax like um, you know variable equal value or keyword equal value so they get the meaning by a keyword so the keyword parameters can be anywhere coded within a job like you know class a i can code it here or i can code it here it gets its meaning but this one two three four or mutu i cannot code it here then it will become a jcl error if it is exists it has to be exist in its position only from there only it will get the meaning okay if any of the position parameters are missing we need to specify by additional comma First, let us see what are the two positional parameters available in the job card. This is the first positional parameter. So it is called accounting information. So uh, what is accounting information? It is like, you know, um, uh, bank may have cash and if you want to withdraw money, uh, you have to specify your account number and um, uh, get it right. Same way, CPU is available in MVS, but you want to run your job taking CPU, you need to give the account number. So. This account number may be documentary purpose from our perspective, that is developer perspective, but it is an important parameter from uh, this admin perspective because um, uh, every month or quarterly or annually, they want to see that which are the business area has used the um, a maximum um, CPU. That report they are running means that basically they will query by means of uh, accounting information. So they know that, okay, this account could have, you know, used this much of CPU like this. So this is an important parameter and installation specific. Next is programmer name or functionality, job functionality. So uh, I'm using, I put my name here, but this is also again installation dependent. So which um, um, your client want to use as accounting name and uh, which your project BA has to use as a, um, you know, functionality or name as per your installation, use it, these two parameters. Next class. Class is the most important critical parameter in job card. You need to use appropriate class for <coughs> your job uh, so that it will be more meaningful. 
so it is uh, defining the processing characteristics of your job like you know the classes are varying from a to z 0 to 9 every class is associated with certain processing capabilities like class a can run only for a uh, one minute of cpu class b can run for five minutes of cpu class c can run you know run for you know any any time any number of cpu so like this you know our class a can two you know cannot access tape drives class b can access only two date drives like this you know based on installation you know they have characteristics assigned for each class so when you are submitting your job or when you are de designing your job you need to see what is more appropriate class for your job and you have to use it again the classes will be on the high level they may be a production class and test class and you cannot uh, submit your job in a test class um, uh, i mean uh, in a test environment with a production class it usually fail or uh, if it passed you will get a notification from our higher management why you use a production class so make sure what class you need to eligible to use among the eligibility which is best suited for your uh, you know job work use that class okay. that is all about class <coughs> and priority priority comes along with class if two jobs of same class is coming to uh, you know just this priority place which one to be scheduled first the priority with the higher number this can be 0 to 15 the 15 is uh, get the first priority so the priority works within the class next message class message class says that where the sysouts are displays or uh, you know messages from your jobs to be routed so message class also it's a installation specific a to z 0 to 9 are the possible values and most of the classes usually mapped with local which is nothing but your spool printer <coughs> message level okay message level saying that what level of information you would like to see in your submitted job in a spool okay the first parameter says the level of information in the jcl second parameter says level of information in the just message log okay uh, probably let us submit the job so that i can explain you better and this will have values like 0 1 2 this will have only 0 and 1 Okay, so now let's probably will uh, submit this job and then mm -hmm. um, I'll explain you better. And one one is for getting the maximum information. Let's submit the job. Okay, it is ended. So I'm going and see. This is this is the one I submitted, right? Yes, message class one one. So I said the first parameter control this, second parameter control this. <coughs> if you are seeing that 36 lines are displayed here and 16 lines came here. So what we'll do is first we'll focus on the first parameter. Okay, the first parameter let's change it to zero and submit it. So let's see what is coming. So only six lines came. So this is the lowest or least possible display for a JCL. So what is came? Only the job card. So if we code zero, you will get only the job card in the just JCL output. Now let's give two because one way we will see it. If you give two, how many lines coming? We will see. If we code two, 33 lines come. Okay, 33 lines means everything came, but what is not came is this is the procedure. This procedure is not expanded here. When you give one, procedure also will get expanded. That is what the first one. So 36, the 36 line come because the proc is expanded. So <coughs> the values for the first parameters is 0, 1 and 2. If I code 0, only JCL statement. If you code 1, the maximum that is all the JCL um, statements as well as the expanded procs will appear and if you code 2 everything coded in a JCL will appear but procs will not be expanded okay now let's take the second one 0 and 1 okay let's see if I do 0 what's happening
So here I got a 34 lines. So 34 lines, it contains information like step, start and end statistics, and the second step, third step, and finally go for the total job and statistics. So step and job end statistics are appearing if I code zero. If I code one, on top of job and step end statistics, I also get information like data set allocations and other things. So 40 lines, what are the 40 lines? This is the information which job related setting is used for the job. And if you see third, I have allocated one DD. So the DD is DD, <coughs> zero D31 allocated to DD1. So this allocation of a data set information also will appear, okay? So second parameter control, you know, just sys message and in this zero says only job and um, uh, step statistics and if you code one, you will get data set allocation statistics also. We are good with message level. Let's go to restart now. Restart saying that when you give star or if you don't go to restart, it starts from the first step. You want to run the job from the third step, you just code restart equal to step three. So when you do that, it will start from directly from step three. So if you see that only step three is executed, that is the restart parameters. And if also you have to see here, okay, step name, proc step name, okay. So if at all procs are used in your job, your restart instruction should be step name dot the proc step name. Like in this example, though we haven't covered proc, which we'll be seeing only down the line in videos, you no need to, you know, bother much. I'll open this proc. This proc is also nothing but a JCL, but it comes with the proc tag. Okay, the proc has two steps, right? Step one and step two. So let me start from this step two. Then what I need to do is, this dummy proc where it is invoked step two. In the step two, which step I want to, from where you want to start? I want to start from step two. <coughs> so it execute step two of dummy proc. From there, it execution will start. So if you see what step two dot step two is the first step restarted step then step three. So this is what you know <coughs> restart parameter syntax step name dot proc step name. Okay. Uh, type run we will cover late. Let's come to notify. Notify saying that um, a job end notification um, or failure notification to which ID need to be sent. You can specify any ID. <coughs> Usually installation you know standards will be like you know you will be you are supposed to go to sys UID. So whoever submitted that owner, in case I am submitting, right? So what happens is the message, this is a message. This message comes to my ID. If I code someone else ID, this message will not come to my ID. Like, you know, said A2292. If I do this, this is a different person ID. So if I submit, I will not get the notification. So to whom the notification should go, that we will be specifying under notify. Usually we'll use Amazon CC ID, which meant for the submitter, the owner. To whom the ID will go, not to, to whom the message will go. Okay. Next is condition parameter. It is the most important parameter in real time as well as in interview perspective. So we'll cover the condition parameter in detail as part of uh, exact statement. But here I want to brief it. Job statement can't be good like this. Okay. Um, return code and the operator like less than or greater than or equal or anything you can code. What does that meaning is? It is just a reverse of if. how you work. If a condition is satisfied, the stem, you know, whatever you coded with that will work, right? So in can't, if a condition is satisfied, things will not work. Condition is um, not satisfied, things will work. What does that mean? First step is completed. You got a return code out of it. Either usually if it is successful execution, you will get a zero. <clears throat> if it is a failure execution, depends on the level of failure, you may get four, eight, 12 or whatever it is. So in this case, zero has come. So once the first step over, the job will check four less than zero is true or false. Four less than true, it's a false. So it will go for the next step. Here there is next step will be step two dot step one will execute it. 
again this condition will be checked like this after every step execution this condition will be verified anywhere this become true the remaining step will be bypassed so what we can do is when it when we do four comma lt since all steps is going to return you know <coughs> a return code of zero all the steps will get executed <coughs> Okay, I have a restart, so only these two parameters. Now we will give a restart equal to star back to original state. And I'll go here, <coughs> my ID. See what's happening. So, all the steps are executed. Now, <coughs> this is a return code. This return code only compare against the count condition whatever we coded okay now what i'll do is i'll code something like zero equal what happens when i code like this the first step is going to return me zero the check is going to happen zero equal zero it is a true so i don't expect second third steps to be executed with this condition let's check it out <clears throat> so only step one is executed and if you see here, it will say that job terminated because of condition code. After first step execution, job is terminated. Okay. So you understand the con parameter on the high level law. And when it is coming for step, it has further complication because the syntax will change with the step name and you can code maximum eight condition. So all those things we will discuss when we are discussing about the <coughs> exact parameter. For now, take it simple and I think you have a fair idea of how the con works now address space this address space can be real or virtual it is not a commonly used parameter you can ignore it and um, it says that which memory the program has to the job has to be executed real memory or virtual memory and region equal to parameter region parameter saying that how much memory you need for running the pro running the job okay and you can code in k or um, you know kilobytes or megabytes you can code this if at all you code in kilobytes it should be a multiple of four otherwise it should be rounded to four okay and that is about region parameter and next is time time 1440 saying that it is it will run for maximum time the actual syntax is like this if i code 1 comma 1 what does that mean is it can run for one minute one second if it is more than that the job will happen so it is a time record for you know time the job can execute okay so if you do that the job will be successfully executed okay the one minute the maximum limit so this time if it is um, you know that i already said the class is associated with every class associated with some kind of time value and you want to override that value but using the remaining attributes of the class the time parameter will help you okay and uh, if a job is taking more than the time specified or more than the limit of a class what happens is it will fail with the event of s322 and um, region related events are s822 and i suggest you to go through um, you know, Aben solution playlist videos where I have explained these two events in detail and there I have explained time parameter with more hands on. Okay. Now, next is what is left over is this type run. What is type run? When I go type run equal to scan, it will just check for syntax issues. If there are no syntax issue, it won't execute, but it says just that it is ended. Only syntax checks will be doing when you do that. Okay. It will not get far executed. Okay. Now, scan is one value. Second is hold. If I code hold, what will happen is, okay, we'll see scan itself one more sample. We'll make some mistakes like ADDRSP. If I say that, it will fail. This is fail. Okay. So if you go and see, you will see a failure. Whenever there is some JOSI or failures are there, you need to first look into here, just this message. If you see that, you will have the problem, which statement is having problem. So unidentified keyword ADDRSP and it is in the statement one. Which statement? You have to come and see here. Here, this is a statement one. So in this statement, we can see that, um, uh, you know, uh, where it is available, we know that it is available here. So we know that we only did the mistake, so we will correct it. Okay. Now this is a scan, and if it is a hold, 
what will happen is it will check for syntax error if there are no syntax error it will get into a whole queue if you see this job will be in the whole queue okay it, it will not execute it just in the whole queue it will be waiting you need to release the job by typing action character as a okay so okay i'm not authorized for this command because this is a training mainframe in your um, development mainframe uh, you know you should be able to uh, issue the a command and uh, release your job okay so this is how you release a job which is in a whole queue anyway i am purging it okay now i also want to say something called type run jcf pool i'll make a mistake here if you see that the jcl pool difference is it won't check jcl check itself it will directly go for whole queue only when you are releasing the job you know it will check for the errors but you are simple cold what it does is it will first check for errors and if there are no errors then only it will keep in the whole queue in this case it will it won't go to hold it will immediately get a error okay that is the difference between hold and jcl hold and um, and also these two parameters are there user and password you can optionally code when you will be coding is um, when you want to access some data set for which you don't have access only your um, your lead or your colleague has access what he will do is his user id his password you can code it when you code like that the owner of the job will become you know uh, that person than you here if you see the job you what you are saying owner is z8260 so notification will go to this guy but when you are doing some other ideas of owner and password the owner will become this guy okay and that is about uh, sometimes you know we have access restriction or other things that person also parallelly okay uh, you can use this id password in a job card and get the job processed okay sometimes it may be useful param uh, you know value in real time projects otherwise for training pinch and training activities and all this is not of much useful so i think i have covered everything related to job what we can do is um, we'll take um, some question answers and we'll try to answer it now okay okay let's try it out uh, some interesting examples okay and uh, after comma if you give space and code or anything that will be considered as a comments line comments and it will be ignored just be aware of it um then we'll see you know if we submit this what will happen if i submit this um, um you know two jobs will be submitted okay that same results you will get even if you have a null statement see after null statement whatever things you coded that will be ignored that is true but job is coming means it will go again as you know this step 3 like you know if i code step 4 this step 4 will not be part of this job card one but this job 2 since job comes it will again submitted as a separate job from here till next null statement comes or end of job comes If you see the job car one, only three, four is you know not appeared. Okay, and two jobs are submitted. Fine then. Uh, then what we are going to do is um, here. If you see that I I don't code my name. The name is um, programmer name is not is given. So since the position of parameters is missing, I code it with the I'm saying that nothing is coded there. So if I submit this, what will happen? See, two jobs are submitted. Why this uh, things happening is your first statement. should not be a comment in jcl this is a most important thing uh, you know the first time whoever i you know trying out jcl they do the mistake 
they write a comment saying that this job is doing this work like something like that in the start itself that is not correct so first statement should not be a comment okay first statement should be a job okay <clears throat> then um what else um if i submit this job it will fail with the jcl error because for a job to be successful there should be at least one step this will fail with the jcl error saying that job has no steps okay and then um, otherwise this message level condition parameters all these things we have already seen um, in our content oriented video uh, i think we are good we are we should be you know completely comfortable with the job job related parameters and here itself i want to say that um, this job card you, you have to be little careful if you make any mistakes in job card you know uh, you may not see the job in spool itself uh, we have already seen as part of mainframe tips have covered couple of videos for example here you have a junk character or anything like this the job will not get to spool at all because the job to be appear in spool first job statement should be valid when job statement is invalid it won't go to spool at all okay and uh, similarly you know if there is some mistakes is here even you note you do a notify after that you don't get notified for example if i code like this okay what happens it's a continuation missing so but notify is coded after that so i'll not get a notification itself for these errors see no notification okay so aware of these things job card is important any mistakes you do you know um, Uh, it may not appear in um, you know uh, sometimes some cases it may not appear in um, spool itself or some cases you don't get notified okay and um, i think uh, junk and mainframe tips i have put couple of video videos on you know this uh, jcl like you know uh, how to correct the job card in case of junk if you are not getting the job in spool what you need to do all these things you can uh, very well check it out over there and um, with respect to theory as if for a mainframe you know uh, eltp entry level programmer and whatever we discuss in job card that's much much more than enough if you understand everything okay and this may be the summary of our uh, discussion like position parameters keyword parameters of job name accounting information program name class priority message level message class how to do the restart then type run the scan hold jcl hold then notify you know user and password and time parameter address space parameter region parameter condition parameter so we know everything and if you see that there are four parameters like time address space region condition all these four parameters are used job as well as exec so which one will be effective all those things we will see as part of exec parameter Thanks for watching. We are done with this video.